I eat a for telling my mom and dad that they have to get their noses pierced if they want to see my daughter again. My husband and I travel down to Mexico to visit with my family. I am an American citizen. My mom and dad are not. My mom and dad got my daughter earrings for her birthday. My daughter's ears are not pierced. She is only one year old. I told them that I would save them for her until she was old enough to get her ears pierced. We left my daughter with my parents while we went to meet up with some friends. When we went to pick up my daughter, my mom showed us that we didn't need to wait because they had taken her to get her ears pierced. I got my daughter and I dragged my husband out of there before he lost his crap. We went back to our hotel. I am furious. My husband said that my parents are not allowed to spend time alone with my daughter ever again. I went farther. I said that I would not be bringing her or any other kids we might have down here to see my parents. We checked out three days early and went home. On the way home, my parents were calling me to see when we were coming over. I ignored all the calls and texts until we were back home in Phoenix. We took a couple of days to think things over and cool down. I finally called them. I asked them not to speak until I was done talking. I told them that my husband and I are upset with them for getting our baby's ears pierced without our permission. I told them that we went back home and probably wouldn't be visiting for a while. They said that my sister and I both had pierced ears when we were babies and that it did not harm us. I said that we were not going to change our minds. They started getting everyone, including my grandmother, to call me and say I was being ridiculous. I talked with my husband and we came up with a compromise. We agreed that we would resume visits, but not alone time with them if they both got their noses pierced. They said that we are being stupid and that they are not going to do that. I said no problem and hung up. We have started blocking anyone who tries to call us and give us crap for denying my parents their right to see my daughter. Aida. For telling my friend my brother isn't serious about her, I'm the youngest of three siblings and my eldest brother is already married. He married an Indian girl that my parents arranged for. My other brother is going to also have an arranged marriage, and he says he is okay with that. But in the meantime, he is still dating other girls and making it seem like he is serious about them. But then he will discard them later. In my culture, losing your virginity before marriage is still taboo for girls. Guys can apparently do whatever they want. My friend likes my brother, and he knows that and is now dating her. I know he will probably try to have her give up her virginity for him, and I think it will break her heart to do that, and then have him dump her. My friend is half Indian, and from her mom's side is from another social class, so my parents would never consider her. My parents are already in talks with a family, and my brother has been chatting with that girl online. He will probably go back home to meet her this fall. My brother has my friend convinced he will marry her once they are done university. I've been friends with her for nearly a decade. Maybe I shouldn't have said anything, but I did, and told her my parents and my brother's plan to have an arranged marriage. She was crying because she had already given her virginity to my brother. A week later, my brother comes to me mad because my friend broke up with him, and in their argument made it clear she knew he was going to go through with marrying another girl and is just stringing her along. He's extremely angry with me because no one else could have told her. I admitted it was me, and he yelled at me that it is not any of my business. AATA for telling my friend to stop calling my diet an eating disorder? I'm overweight, and I'm currently on a weight loss journey. I've got 20 LABs to go until I hit my goal for IVF, but I've another 40 LABs to lose in total. I've been doing this by calorie counting, intermittent fasting. I've got a friend, we'll call her Ella, and together we are the biggest girls in our friend group. Ella has always been a little bigger than me, and she very much believes that you can be healthy at every size. We went out for dinner with our close friend group. When we were seated, I asked the waiter for a menu with the calories on it. The menus don't have the calories on them, but you can request one with them. I heard Ella make a comment under her breath, but I didn't hear it properly. When we ordered drinks, Ella seemed offended that I ordered water. She tried to get the waiter to bring me a full-fat Diet Coke, but I insisted on the water, telling Ella that if I had wanted a Coke, then I would have ordered one. She kept trying to insist on me having the Coke, but another one of the group told Ella that I'd ordered what I wanted and to leave it. After the waiter left, 
One of the group commented on my appearance, saying that I was looking brighter, less tired, and I was walking better. When I was heavier, I was tired and sore all the time due to the extra pressure on my joints. I was also dealing with a lot of symptoms from my chronic illness. My joints now hurt less, and I have much more energy. Ella said that I was starting to look gaunt and sickly because of my eating disorder. The others defended me while I told Ella that I didn't have an eating disorder. I was just losing weight for my health. Ella just rolled her eyes. When we ordered our food, she made more comments about me having an eating disorder because I ordered a salad but asked for the dressing to be on the side and eating rabbit food. Even at my biggest, I liked salad and would order it with the dressing on the side. After we had eaten, I was the only one who didn't order a dessert. I didn't have many calories left and wanted to use them for a hot chocolate in bed. This caused Ella to again accuse me of having an eating disorder because I was restricting myself. I snapped at Ella telling her that just because she was happy at her size and felt fine in her body didn't mean that I did, nor did it mean I have an eating disorder. She told me that I was just being hangry and I should have a slice of cake. Our friends told her to drop it, but she tried to get the waiter to get me a slice of cake. I just snapped and told Ella that I didn't want to fat any more and to just leave it alone, and I asked the waiter for the bill so I could pay my portion and leave. Ella's still upset and vague booking about a friend who was blind to her eating disorder, who had called her fat in public, and some people are defending her. Because of her reaction, I wonder if I could have handled this better. Ada? Aita for getting upset. A stranger held my baby. Okay, my boyfriend, 27M, and I, 26F, have been together about two years now, but on and off since high school. We've always felt like endgame and end up together. But I love him and our baby, 1M. This is my second baby. During our last off, I was with my ex who was so abusive to me that it gave me PTSD, which my current BF knows a bit about, so I'm protective over my kids. Always have been that way to be completely honest. I'm more of a reserved person. He is so trustworthy. So a last night, we went to a chain restaurant for his cousin, 22M birthday, let's call him cousin with most of his family, so about 15 of us total. Now I need to give you context. Cousin has a girlfriend, 21F, let's call her GF. Never met her. Heard of her twice in the two years, maybe. But cousin moved her down here from a different country. Now, before y'all get defensive in the comments, we're the same ethnicity. Now, cousin goes to this country quite frequently. Don't know if this is the same girlfriend from last year. My boyfriend can't tell me because he doesn't even know. Get to the restaurant, get out the car, say hi to cousin and GF stands there outside our car. My boyfriend is with our baby in his car seat. No hi, no intro, nothing immediately, she goes for my baby. I say nothing, I'm trying. My boyfriend had met her boyfriend once I believe since she's moved down here. My boyfriend hands over my baby. I say nothing. He's in a car seat that's fine with me. I get in the restaurant. She's got my baby in her arms. Mom rage immediately activated. Any mom knows this. Why is a stranger I don't know touching my baby? I'm already sketched out about them carrying him in a car seat. We get in say hi to everyone. My boyfriend knows I'm upset he can see it. I say nothing. His grandma can see it and tells me to sit with her. I'm quiet. Couple minutes into the dinner, I realize we don't have my son's bottle. I go to the car to get it because I need air. I can't find it. I ask my boyfriend to help me find it. He comes out. Still sees I'm upset, asks a second time he keeps on asking as I tell him we can talk about it later. But he won't drop it, so I tell him why I'm upset. He proceeds to tell me how I'm overreacting and I'm the only one with the problem. You are the only one that has a problem with her. I do start cry because I'm hormonal still. It's not funny. I can hear those words over and over in my head. We can't find the bottle. He goes inside, leaving me outside alone, teary-eyed and upset. I call my mom to calm down, ask if I'm overthinking it, and she reaffirmed me I was not. I text him, I'm going to the bathroom, no response at this point in debating leaving with my son. But I can't cause a scene, so I mediate a bit and go back. Finish the dinner and he acts like all is fine. We never talk about it again. It's the next morning, but his words are engraved in my brain. He changed how I now look at him. He's literally defending a stranger instead of me. No apology. Am I the Aida or overthinking?
ITA for throwing my son out of the house. I, 40M, have a son, J, 16M. -E we live together alone. His mother is not in the picture. I have done my best as a single parent since she disappeared on us when Jay was four. My son has always been my best friend. I'll admit that I'm not very good at taking an authoritative role. He hasn't ever given me much reason to. He's always been the kind of kid who just needed a guiding hand in the right direction. He's smart, level-headed, and generally a very caring person. Jay has been dating a wonderful girl, E, 16F, for the better part of two years since they met in freshman year. She's nice and respectful, and they seem to get along well. About two weeks ago, they were spending time in the living room and got into a pretty heated argument. E came to me and asked me for a ride home. I let Jay know and asked if he's okay. He said he's a bit frustrated, and maybe some space would be a good idea. So a quiet drive to her home? She thanked me, and I went back home. I asked Jay what happened. He explained the situation. Not going to put the business out there, just a common argument in couples. And he said he would talk to her once he had a more level head. Everything sounded reasonable. Three days ago, Jay told me he had a friend coming over. I say no problem and just let me know if he needs anything. I was beat from overtime and knocked out for a bit. I wake up and I hear a woman's voice downstairs. I come downstairs to Jay kissing an unfamiliar girl. I asked Jay if he could help me with something quickly. He says sure and we head to the garage. I close the door and ask who that is. Jay says she's just a friend. I ask what's going on with E. He responds, well, maybe this will get her to pull her head out of her crap. I said, all right, that's not how I raised you. You know what you're doing is wrong. I explained, if you don't tell E, I will. This didn't seem to register with him. He shrugged me off and walked off to spend time with his friend. I called E's father and let him know what's going on. Jay is then on the phone getting in an argument. E breaks up with him. He approaches me, gets mad at me. I tell him to accept responsibility. He refuses. I yell him to pack his stuff and that until he can learn he owes E an apology and accept responsibility. He will be staying with his aunt. I take his car keys. My sister picks him up and he leaves pissed. It's been three days and my sister tells me he's still angry and Jay refuses to reach out to me. I spoke with my friend about the situation and he told me I should have let it be. Jay knows I don't condone cheating, but maybe my buddy is right. Aita? Aita for telling my son that we don't really have any room for him right now, so he needs to live with his dad and stepmom. My ex-husband and I divorced when my son was ten. My ex had found someone new. We went for 50-50 custody, but he still had to pay some child support. I went back to school at that time. On the weeks his dad had him, I buckled down and did nothing but schoolwork. When he was with me, I made sure I had time for him before and after school. I did expect him to help around the house, but nothing excessive. Mostly just cleaning up after himself and helping with cooking and laundry. His dad's house was more fun. I tried to make my home welcoming. I bought a used PS4 and I got fibre optic internet. It wasn't enough for him. When he was 14, he and his father got the court to award my ex primary custody. I did fight it, but my son made it clear he would run away if I didn't give in. Counselling didn't help. I tried everything. It was devastating having my son decide I wasn't someone he wanted to spend time with. He started skipping visitation. When he did come, he would leave the house and not come home until it was time to sleep. During this time, I started a relationship with my current husband. He helped me through this. He wasn't on my radar romantically, nobody was, so he got close by being an amazing friend. I asked him out, and we got married six months later. We had known each other since I went back to university. Six months after we got married, I got pregnant. By strange coincidence, so did the woman my ex was cheating with. Not the woman he left me for. A newer model. I had sold my house and my husband, and I bought a condo together. Just a two-bedroom apartment with a tiny den. We made the den into a nursery and consolidated our offices into the second bedroom. My ex moved in with his new girlfriend. 
and she isn't a fan of my son. His stepmother doesn't want him there if his father isn't there, so my son is also in the new house with his dad, his dad's pregnant girlfriend and her mom. My son is 16 now, and he called me to see if he could stay with me. I said I didn't really have any room. He asked me what I did with his room. He didn't even know I sold the house. He is very upset. He called me a witch for not having a place for him to stay. I said he could stay in our living room on the couch. Not acceptable. I talked to my husband and we have enough money from the sale of my house and his old bachelor pad, a well as our condo to buy back into the market. We were waiting for interest rates to fall. And we were going to move to a more reasonably priced city. I told my son if he could take the living room for now, we could have a room for him in six months. He moved in with his grandparents. He isn't happy there. At least his dad got him a car so he can drive to his same school. My son is pissed that I prioritise my new baby and my work over him. I had no expectation to ever need to house him again. My ex called me and told me to make our office into a room for our son. I told him that our son's circumstances were his fault, not mine. Aita for kicking my son's girlfriend out of our house. My husband, 58M, and I, 56F, recently met my son's 24M girlfriend for the first time. He's been crazy about her. Apparently they've been dating for a year before he decided to have her meet us officially. What he's told us about her all seems great. She just got her degree, was enjoying her job, family-oriented, etc. I'm honestly just glad he's happy with her. My husband and I don't think he's ever been this into someone before, so I feel pretty bad about what I did. Last weekend, he brought her over for dinner. By now, we'd been anticipating meeting her with how much our son has been gushing about her. How perfect she is. That she's the one, in his words. They ring the doorbell. We open the door. She looks exactly like her pictures, which is a great start. My son is grinning ear to ear. Another great start. We invite them in. She accepts my hug and a firm handshake from my husband, and then she opens her mouth. I'm the one your son puts his penis in. To be frank, I was appalled. I expected my husband to laugh. Both he and my son are jokesters, and as annoying as it can be, I love it. But this was just too much for me. Maybe I'm reserved, but of all things she could have shared about my son, she told us that. One look at my face and my husband knew how much I disapproved. Maybe I let my expectations get too high, and it's unfair to have them. But I reiterate, of all things to say to her boyfriend's parents, whom she'd never met, she chose that? My son was amused at first, but when he noticed my reaction, his face dropped. I felt like he'd sold me the full package, everything he'd always been looking for in a girlfriend. I was too disturbed by the visual it put in my head, and it translated into anger. I told her to get out, and I wanted to say more about how gross it made me feel, but I fortunately left it at that. My son didn't want to go, insisting I give her another chance, but I was too fed up and uncomfortable by this point. Even my husband, who's enjoyed his fair share of raunchy jokes, wouldn't let up. They left, and I immediately felt guilty. This was something my son had really looked forward to, and I feel like I took that away over a dumb joke. I tried calling to apologize, but he hasn't responded. My husband thinks she's the one who should apologize. I'm considering giving her another chance, but before I do, was I the A.H.? Edit. I should clear some things up. My husband had no part in my reaction. I did the kicking out, not him. I don't want him taking the fall for this. He said she should apologize, but I'm not expecting an apology. Sorry for the confusion. My son lives in a nearby state. It can take about an hour to get back to where we live. He also hasn't dated anyone seriously for a while, maybe a couple of years. He told us before that he wouldn't bring anyone home unless he's sure he wants a future with her. We've been asking to meet her ever since he told us about her, but he wanted to be ready. The comment about her looking like her picture shows my age. Sorry for that. He's only shown us her photos she sent him as he apparently didn't have any of them together. He hates taking pictures and apparently she's always teasing him about it. 
I don't think he'd ever lie about who she is, but it's just a parental concern I've subconsciously had. I felt the same way about my daughter's then boyfriend when we first met him. I don't have any criteria that either of my kids' spouses need to meet. I just hope my kids are happy with them. What I meant by her being the full package was indicative of what he's told us about her. As his parents, we have a good idea of what he looks for in a partner, and she checked off everything based on what we'd been told. And on top of everything, aside from what she said, her appearance was how she presented it to be. Again, we aren't strict about appearances. It's just a relief to have met someone for the first time, and they look like what you'd expected. My husband said that I was worried about secondhand catfishing, if that's even a thing, lol. I guess it shows how anxious I was about this.